and doubles him off. What a play by Garrett Cole. It's the curve ball, and it was a good one. Just blows that one past Russell for his eighth. Tremendously excited. How do you ask for anything more than to become the world champions? Good night, an eight pitch inning. Ten strikeouts for Garrett Cole. I think we got better the, the day that, that uh that the deal was finalized. You know, obviously he adds to the mix uh, of quality starters and, and on a quality team. So that's a six pitch inning. Strike three call. 98 for Cole. Nice. Uh, I couldn't wait to talk to him, get to know him a little bit, uh, and, and, and start you know, the build for whatever's next for all of us. Hey everyone, welcome to 1225 Live. I'm Alexa Dad. Garrett Cole was introduced by his new team yesterday. Here a little bit later in the show, how he believes he fits into this Astros rotation. Plus, it's Throwback Thursday. Danny and I are going to discuss some throwback moments of the top tier free agents that we've been discussing all off season, like Jake Arrieta and you Darvish. Plus, where do they end up in 2018? It's also National Thesaurus Day. Britt Giroli is going to join us in just a little bit to pick out some words from the Thesaurus to fill in the blank on the career of Manny Machado and Bryce Harper and what she believes is the best route for them and their futures. But we start the show like we do every day with our social savant, Danny Wexelman. And Danny, not only is it National Thesaurus Day, yes. not only is it Throwback Thursday, it's also Winnie the Pooh Day. The, this is literally the coolest, best day ever. That wasn't really that good of a word. I'm really trying to up my diction today because it's National Thesaurus Day, so we're going to try to throw some uh, clever words in here today. But yes, National Winnie the Pooh Day. What better than, what better, what better? What's better? Nothing's better. Nothing's, Nothing's better. better. So what we're going to do is we're going to compare some Winnie the Pooh characters to uh, baseball players because I feel like a lot of these personalities could match up pretty well. I agree. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and start, and I feel like we've seen a lot of the big little comparisons run throughout the 2017 <laughs> season, right? Yeah. Aaron Judge and Jose Altuve, and obviously this photo, this iconic photo from this season is going to live on forever in uh, baseball lore. So for me, this reminds me of Kanga and Little Rue. Because Kanga's kind of the quiet, taller, uh, you know, bigger in stature, but not so much with uh, the words and, and Judge is a quiet guy. But Rue is bouncing all over the place and does a lot of talking. And that's Jose Altuve, not only with his bat uh, and his on-field performance, but also his singing in the clubhouse and everything he says in the locker room. I love it. I think I think it's amazing, and this is the perfect representation. What I was thinking along the lines of Piglet would be Corey Seager, because Corey Seager is very quiet, but he has been able to go on some very large adventures, just like Piglet gets to do with Winnie the Pooh and Tigger, and I think that he's the perfect match for a Piglet. What do you think? I love it, yeah. I do kind of feel like... You know, Piglet is uh, Winnie the Pooh's sidekick, yeah. and I feel like Corey Seager can sometimes be the sidekick, but bring so much personality and energy in a soft-spoken way. So I like that. That's right. Okay, next up for Tigger, I'm thinking Carlos Gomez, because <laughs> Carlos Gomez is so boisterous, and he loves to kind of stir things up. He's always losing his helmet, losing his footing, and you can see him here with his tongue out, Yasiel Puig style. And Tigger is... The boisterous and exuberant character. He's one of a kind. He's eagerly, uh, he's eager to share his enthusiasm with others and whether they want him to or not. And I think this perfectly describes Carlos Gomez. But to sum it all up, let me tell you something. Winnie the Pooh and Bartolo Colon are a match <laughs> made in baseball and, uh, you know, animated heaven. <laughs> the two of them are literally one and the same, the same soul. So sweet. Bartolo Colon, like we learned from Cut Four's True or False quiz had a donkey growing up, Winnie the Pooh's best friend is Eeyore. And there's so many comparisons, plus they're both lovable. You just want to go up and give them both a big bear hug. And they probably both like honey equally. I would assume so. Right? Yes, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> All right, it's Throwback Thursday, so we're going to talk about some of the top-tier free agents and throw it back to some of their career-defining moments. So my Throwback Thursday takes us all the way back to 2014, and it's a warm day in June, June 11th to be specific, all the way in Arlington, Texas. A young Rangers pitcher by the name of Hugh Darvish is on the mound facing the Marlins where he pitches a six-hitter, strikes out 10 batters, and most importantly, picks up his first career complete game shutout. Darvish struck out the side in the eighth, and he celebrated in the ninth on the front of the mound with Chris Jimenez. By the way, one of Darvish's 10 strikeouts was Giancarlo Stanton. 
history between these two players as well as a future, I believe, as in future teammates. Because Yankees GM Brian Cashman said this week he's been debating between adding a frontline starter to this rotation or an infielder, and they've been in talks with Hugh Darvish's agent. I do feel like if the Yankees are able to trade Jacoby Ellsbury or they've been talking about moving Robertson, there is room still for Hugh Darvish to join this team. He's one of the teams that has been uh, labeled, as Hugh Darvish said, uh, that's remaining that he would love to join. So I feel like they could get this all worked out. Plus, Hugh Darvish's performance in the World Series is going to drop his price tag just enough for the Yankees <laughs> to swoop in and pick him up. So much expectations there already in the Bronx. They would go uh, through the roof with Darvish joining that rotation. You have thought this out. Yeah. And I have also thought this out. Okay. And I'm thinking that Jake Arrieta will be the next off the board because I'm thinking that the Brewers are ready to make a statement. They're ready to pounce. So I see Arietta going to the Brewers. He's going to be a key component to their success. I'm going to make the case here. Let's go back just like you described. It was Wednesday, October 29th, 7.08 p.m. Central Time. 38,000 people in attendance and a high of 72 degrees. Maestro, Jake Arietta on the mound, looking to tie the series in Cleveland during the World Series. He takes a no-hit bid into the sixth inning and steered his team to a 5-1 to one conquest, <laughs> by the way. And Arietta is coming off what some may call a fleecy season, not his best. He went 14-10 and 10 with a 1-2-2 two, two whip. But I think that he's the guy that can boost up the Brewers, that he can take them to the next level and fight in that NL Central. So I think he's the next guy coming off the board. I love it. Absolutely love it. Uh, let's talk about a guy who is being added to a rotation that I believe is going to take a huge step forward, if that's even possible. How do the Astros, the best team in baseball last season, get any better? Well, it's with the addition of Garrett Cole, who uh, had a great 2017, and we're going to have to see how he fits into this World Series rotation. It's pretty cool. Uh, as we took a look at him being introduced yesterday, here's what he had to say about joining the World Series champs. I was just tremendously excited. Uh, I was um, out with some friends, having a good time uh, for my for my wife's week or birthday weekend, and uh, so it was a it was a really good phone call. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, who? How do you ask for anything more than to be coming to the World Champions? So, I mean, I think it boils down to uh, to command. Uh, I think it boils down to executing pitches. Um, so. Uh, there are a lot of uh, there are a lot of contributing factors, um, but you know I'm just going to trust what I do. Um, continue to use the resources around me. Um, try to soak up as much as I can from some of the veterans on this team and uh, some of the really good players. Um, I'm looking forward to working with Brian McCann, and I'm looking forward to uh, you know a new approach. Um, I know uh, you know there are there are some things that the Astros do that are that are different. Um, and uh, so I'm looking forward to hearing those things and, and hopefully trying to get a lot better. All right, so let's take a look at the Astros' projected rotation. A lot of big names in this rotation. You got former Cy Young Award winner in Dallas Keuchel, who had a fantastic 2017. Former MVP in Justin Verlander. You're going to get a full season after uh, of him for 2018. And Garrett Cole gets to join his former buddy, Charlie Morton, who they spent some time in Pittsburgh together with. Plus, you got Lance McCullers' curveball. All of this packed into one World Series team trying to defend their title there, trying to go back to back, trying to be legend, trying to do it all uh, in 2018. So it'll be interesting to see how that all plays out. They are going legend. And not to not to say anything about that, but on top of the starting rotation, if you look at the back end, they've got Brad Peacock, Colin McHugh, Chris Davinsky, Ken Giles. So they're stacked. There literally is not a hole anywhere in the entire top to bottom. So they will be feared. Uh, in the AL West as well as the rest of the league. Yeah, hopefully that bullpen picks itself back up because they didn't have uh, a great playoff run, to say the least, and the starting rotation had to uh, pick them up yeah, by the bootstrap. So uh, hopefully that bullpen can, can uh, turn it around a little bit in 2018. Hopefully. Yeah. All right, question of the day? Yes, and we're going to stick with a thesaurus theme. Okay. I, you're a word nerd. I'm a word nerd. And so we want to hear from you guys on Facebook. If you can come up with a really good word to finish this sentence. Our sentence is, if my favorite team won the World Series, I would feel blank. 
We want to know, how would you feel if your favorite team won the World Series? Maybe you'd feel stupefied or um, extraordinary. That's not really that great, but you know what you know what we're getting at. Something better than the ordinary everyday word. Yeah, if someone could come up with a uh, synonym for relieved, because that's how <laughs> I would feel. I'm all for it. I'm all ears. So let us know. Yes, if you're if you're on Facebook and if you're not, head over right now. Let us know. We're going to read those at the end of the show. All right, we got another word nerd joining us right now uh, in Britt Giroli, who we're going to ask to fill in the blanks using a thesaurus. <laughs> hey, Britt, uh, long time no see. How's it going? Good, how are you? Good, you ready for National Thesaurus Day where we're gonna ask you to fill in some of these blanks? I think so, I All think right. so. Okay. <laughs> Fingers crossed, hey, I like it. That's uh, always a great way to start off this segment. All right, so uh, we've been talking all week about Andrew McCutcheon and Evan Longoria joining the Giants out there. The Giants are looking to become the sixth team in MLB history to finish last in the division one year and then get a wild card berth the next year. The Giants' playoff hopes are blank. Uh, I'm going to have to say they're pretty spelt, uh, which is slim at this point in time. It could be done, certainly. Uh, but, you know, until you look at what they've got in spring training, until you see how this group jives, certainly an uphill battle for the Giants. Yeah, absolutely, because you've got three of the five teams who made the playoffs last year, and they're not going anywhere. So it'll be interesting to see what happens with J.D. Martinez and the Diamondbacks, because if they end up parting ways, Diamondbacks might take a little bit of a, a step back and uh, might provide an opening for that Giants team. But you've got a rotation that's getting older, a bullpen that hasn't really been shored up. So a lot of question marks uh, and spring training will hopefully maybe answer some of those uh, for this Giants team. All right, next up, the biggest Orioles storyline of the offseason is what to do with <laughs> Manny Machado. I mean, it's what everyone's asking, Brett, and I'm sure you've gotten tons of emails and texts and tweets about uh, what his future is. Uh, and let's talk about his future. Manny Machado is uh, going to sign a long-term deal and build around Baltimore, or is this going to be something that we're uh, going to have to fill in the blank for? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of words that come to mind. Zero, zip, uh, no chance, uh, zilch. Uh, I mean, it's point zero 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 one percent chance that Manny Machado stays in Baltimore long-term. Look, uh, I know it's upsetting to Orioles fans, and it seems like every day this comes up, but they haven't discussed a, an extension in two years. If Manny Machado hits the free agent market, which he's expected to do, the Orioles are not going to be able to compete financially. He's going to have a great market. Him and Josh Donaldson will probably be some of the, the top names. Of course, you got Bryce Harper coming down the pike as well. Um, it's going to be a really interesting uh, few years when you look at free agents and some of these superstars coming off the board. The Orioles simply don't have the money. They've got too much tied up in other players like Chris Davis. It's just not getting happened. It's just not getting done. I'm sorry, Orioles fans. It's just not happening. Who's the team that you believe that he will end up with? The Yankees are probably a pretty good early pick. Uh, they've got the money. Uh, certainly, I think he would do well in a big city like New York. So uh, I'm going to put my early money on the Yankees as much as I'm sure that pains uh, Orioles fans and really the whole division because they'd have to see him all the time. It's one thing he goes out to the West Coast. They see him once a year, but uh, certainly not out of sight, out of mind every time. He would do something against the Orioles. It would just be that much more of a, of a dagger, you know, twisting the dagger, so to speak, uh, in Orioles fans and, the, and their poor hearts. Yeah, you're giving Orioles fans agita right now. They're a little nervous <laughs> as, as I know. you say something like that. But, yeah, the, the Yankees have the money and the wherewithal to get it done. So uh, we'll see. All right, the Nationals have one more year left on Bryce Harper's contract before he walks in free agency, potentially. Uh, we're not 100% sure, but – Time's running out, and they have yet to win a postseason series. The pressure to win right now is blank with the Nationals. Paramount, um, which I thought was a good word. It's on. It's right now. They, they've got to win. Um, certainly every team, and you know, Alexa, they always look every year like they're going to be the team, and I usually pick them, and then they let me down. Uh, I can't imagine being a Nationals fan. I think it would be heartbreaking. I mean, certainly uh, heartbreaking being a fan of a lot of teams uh, that have gone through droughts. But it just looks like every year this is the complete team. They've got the rotation. You know, they got the offense. We know they had some bullpen issues last year. But uh, hopefully this is the year because this is probably going to be it. I mean, certainly they have a better chance than the Orioles of retaining their superstar. Uh, but, you know, you, you want to see this happen for this organization. Um, I don't think long-suffering is the word, but it just always seems like uh, they can't get it done in the clutch. And it's really unfortunate. I just think of that game a few years ago that they ended up blowing in the postseason. Um, that's really kind of synonymous with the Nationals. And no team wants to be known for that kind of stuff. 
get it done, Nationals. Get it done. Yeah, I feel like the Nationals fans keep uh, Ann Acids in business because this team is constantly <laughs> giving us heartburn, man. It's awful. I'm telling you, something's got to change. Uh, fingers crossed that this is the year for those Nats fans. All right, Chris Bryant mentioned Bryce Harper's name. Speaking of Bryce Harper at a Cubs convention, he was saying how the Cubs uh, could potentially make a, a pretty big pitch for Bryce Harper during his free agency. He's like, well, his dog's name's Wrigley. You know, I, I think he actually <laughs> he's a big fan of this team. So uh, let's fill in the blank. Harper in a Cubs lineup with uh, uh, Chris Bryant and Anthony Rizzo has Cubs fans blank. Okay, I got this one. I wanted to learn a new word for the show today. Okay. And it's got Cubs fans on tenter hooks, which means excited in all. They're on tenter hooks. Just the idea of having them in that lineup uh, puts them on tenter hooks. Again, what a great expression. Why does nobody use this anymore? It means they're beyond excited. They're exalted. Um, I wanted to bring a new word to the thesaurus. I'm going to try and use that today in my everyday lingo on tenter hooks. What are you on tenter hooks about, Alexa? Um, yeah, I mean, you bringing a new word <laughs> to the show is what I'm on tensor hooks about, if that's how you even say it. I love it, though. What a tensor bizarre hooks. Word. Tensor yes. hooks. Okay. Yes. Uh, I love it. Yeah, you're getting it done and more here, Britt. Um, in the latest <laughs> saga of trade requests, uh, Josh Harrison pulls a Starlin Castro, and he says, if you're going to trade everyone, you might as well trade me, too. The concept of players asking to be traded as the rest of their team rebuilds uh, and as the, uh, the faces of these franchise hit the road, Brittany, is what? Well, it's incredibly progressive, for one. It's not something you heard about a couple of years ago. Now, all of a sudden, it's like, trade me or else. Uh, you're, you're hearing more about the players' rights. And I don't know if that's just today's player or kind of the world we live in with social media and some of the control that they may or may not have over what gets out. Uh, but certainly, it's very progressive. And I mean, I don't blame him. Uh, with the way Miami is fire sailing, I think if you're a, a guy in your prime, you're a guy who who's playing really well, you kind of look and you're like you're looking around like, oh, where is everyone? Like, uh, we're not going to win for a long time. Can I please get out of here? Um, and if you look at some of the reports, it says that the relationship is broken. Certainly seems like it'd probably be in their best interest to trade him, uh, as difficult as that may be. Uh, you know, when you look at it, I think as a player, you know, it's well within your rights to go to ownership and say, listen, we're not going to win for a while. Uh, I've got a decent little salary here. Can you please try and trade me? All right. Speaking of trade demands, Christian Yelich also wants out, and he hopes to be traded before spring training. It's interesting. A bunch of teams have inquired about the outfielder. He's 26 years old. The most interesting team recently has been the Braves. Uh, the Braves will be blank to trade Ronald Acuna, their top prospect and company, for Christian Yelich. Ill-advised. Uh, I don't think they're going to do it. Uh, I think as soon as you mention that name, who is their top prospect, they're kind of like, Ugh, all right, slow up a little bit. Uh, so it wouldn't be a, a great idea, I think, for the Braves, who have really worked to kind of build up that farm system a little bit. Uh, we know they've had some lean years. We know that they've purposely you know, tried to stockpile some of that talent young below. And you know, as, as much as uh, a deal like that, they certainly would be interested. And, you know, it's well within Miami's rights to be like, hey, you know what? You, you want this guy? Well, we want the best guy that you've got down below, plus some more. Uh, but I just don't think, I think as soon as you mention that name, Atlanta kind of takes their papers off the table and walks away. All right. Sounds good. And also, J.D. Martinez, for our final question here, was instrumental in the Dimebacks, obviously making it to the postseason this season this year. So he wants to get paid in free agency. Reports were refuted that the Red Sox offered him five years, $100 million. He's seeking six years, $30 million per year. J.D. Martinez is actually worth blank, Britt, to the team that signs him this offseason. Oh, uh, well, you know, he's worth a lot. And, you know, I, I kind of, I, I know it's not a great word for Theosaurus Day, but um, 25 million, maybe 20 million. I, I certainly could see it. It seemed like every time I watched the Diamondbacks, he got something done. And he didn't just hit throwaway home runs. He hit big home runs in big situations for them. He's a veteran. He's a good character guy. Uh, I think he's a great guy to have around in the clubhouse. So those all factor in as well. Certainly coming off a career year, uh, can he do what he did last year? Uh, it's going to be real tough to top. But uh, you look at that kind of production uh, and what he's able to do, how much he changes the, the whole com co context, really, of a lineup. Uh, having a guy like that in there, pitchers know. It changes what they do in front of them, behind them, et cetera. 
I think he's worth a lot of money. $20, $25 million to me wouldn't surprise me at this point in time. Lock that guy up. I think a lot of teams would really like to have a bat like J.D. Martinez. Yeah, it's interesting, too, because he's kind of holding out, and he says he's willing to hold out through spring training. His agent, Scott Boris, kind of coming to the conclusion of, I feel like a team will pay us the amount that we want, so we're just going to sit back and wait for it. Is that ill-advised, Britt, or do you think that holding out for spring training to get the money that he believes he owes is, is smart for him? Yeah, I don't think that's a great move. I mean, I know what, what they're trying to do. Obviously, they're trying to hope that somebody gets injured in camp, somebody gets desperate, and they pay that kind of money. Now, yeah, it could happen, certainly, but... Uh, I think for the player, starting spring training with a team, getting used to the coaches, the guys in that clubhouse, uh, can't be understated. Baseball players are creatures of habit. And there's been several pitchers who have come to the Orioles, missed spring training, late signings for whatever reason, and they never look quite right. I think these guys need to, especially uh, when they're with a new team, they need to start in the beginning. They need to be with that club. Now, what helps them is he's not a pitcher. If he was a pitcher, I think it would be even more important to get those reps in, to build up those innings. Uh, but I really don't like the idea of missing all of spring training, kind of hoping that some other club has an issue just so you can get paid what you think you're worth. I agree. All right, we got a fan question for you from Danny. Joining us here on the three box on our screen. Danny, you oh, got to... No. Oh, wait, hold on. We're going to... We're going to... Manny Machado. There's Danny. All right. <laughs> I'm here. Britt, I'm on tenterhooks for you being on the show today. <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> I was over here dying <laughs> laughing uh, at that moment because I didn't see it coming, and it's a, it's a fabulous word, so I Great love word. that. Thank you. Uh, Bruce on Facebook wants to know, is Lorenzo Cain going to come to Cleveland? So, ooh, hmm. geez. Uh, I can't believe I got a question that wasn't about Manny Machado. <laughs> yes. Every time I'm on this show, as a lexicon the test, it's about Manny Machado. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I think it's a good fit. Um, I don't know if I can handicap the chances at all, but... Uh, I think when you look at that guy, he certainly got some tools that could really help a club. And I think for the Indians, you know, similar to the Astros, they're, they're so good right now. They're such a good, deep, dangerous team uh, that you have to look at these additions in terms of what kind of guy he is as well and see if he fits in. Uh, you know, Lorenzo Cain, the first thing that jumps to mind is his time, obviously, in Kansas City, what he was able to do there. Uh, I think he does have a skill set that could help them, but I, I can't handicap uh, at any point in time whether or not they're going to get Lorenzo Kane at all. Yeah. I've got no inside information to the Kane, the Kane track. <laughs> well, it's interesting too because a lot of teams need, you know, a, a veteran center fielder. And also the Indians have lost a couple pieces so far this out off season and haven't really replaced them just yet. So uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens with the Indians. Uh, they don't have too much competition in that division. So I don't know if there's uh, any sort of immediate need to replace them. But uh, I don't know if taking a step back is a smart thing for that team. We'll see. I don't know. All right, Britt, thanks so much. I appreciate you teaching us new words here, man. We learn something new every day. Uh, awesome to have you. And enjoy your offseason. We'll check in with Manny Machado and uh, all kinds of news from around the league with you a little bit later on. All right. Thanks for having me. Thanks, Britt. All right. Uh, it's time to talk about our question of the day. Danny, we want to uh, revisit it and ask people a word that they can describe if their team won the World Series. That's right. That's right. So what we need from you guys is to fill in the blank. If my favorite team won the World Series, I would feel blank. So I need to know what team that you're talking about when you give me the word. So um, let's see. Glenn. Glenn, I love your words, but I don't know which team that you're going for. So let me know which team. So, for example, if the Cardinals won the World Series, I would feel harebrained, uh, a little surprised and shocked, uh, but that's how I would feel. So that's my big word, harebrained. So let us know on Facebook your great thesaurus word and which team you would feel that way about. All right, sounds good. Learning new words. How about a little trash talk also this offseason? This Love kind it. of took us a little bit by surprise. Mm -hmm. It started with a statement from Wilson Contreras talking about Yadier Molina and Buster Posey. He said, I used to watch a lot of these guys, but now I'm watching myself because I know that I'm going to be better than them. That's my plan. That's my mindset. Right. So then Yadier Molina followed up on social media, which he has been doing a little bit more recently, speaking up through this platform. And I think he took a little bit of offense to the fact that Contreras said how good Yadi was and how good Buster Posey is. So Molina responded basically saying, hey, respect the ranks. Here's me with my guys who have proven themselves. That's obviously Sal Perez and Buster Posey. So there was a little bit of back and forth. Yeah, and then Contreras took to Twitter, and he wanted to smooth over some of the backlash he got for his comments. Many people have misinterpreted what was said during a recent interview. I see no wrong in taking the best players as personal goals. 
and what player doesn't want to be the best at their position? I know I'm lacking many years of experience and only time will tell. So then, um, and then he said, uh, still Contreras, to use the best players as a model or standard and want to exceed them, I don't believe is any disrespect, simply motivation and inspiration. Have a great night. God bless you all. All right, so let's talk about this a little bit because I do feel like when you end up using a specific player's name to kind of call out how you feel about a specific topic, you're calling out that player. Yes. You're not just saying how you feel about a specific subject. You're talking about that player's history in the league and how you compare. And if, if you are you know feel comfortable doing that, that's fine, but you also have to feel comfortable with the backlash. I definitely agree. I think that when you have a goal and when you feel confident enough that you are going to be as good as those people, there may be a better way to go about saying these things. And with social media, it, it shouldn't be um, it shouldn't be new to anybody at this point that things are going to get misconstrued and people will read into them the way they want to read into them. So you might as well just be crystal clear and say, I have learned a lot. I am going to be great. And I've looked to these guys to become that great. I hope one day to be just like them. I think that there's just a better way to say it, to compliment the people and to still be like, hey, I know I'm good and I'm going to be great. So, so let me prove it here. But there's just a there's a better way to go about it. My right, opinion. saying that you're going to be better than anyone always puts you in hot water. So you better be able to uh, sink or swim in that situation. That's right, because I, that's just going to be the situation. Yeah. All right. Uh, time for a fair or foul. We heard about this this week. Derek Jeter not only cleaning house down there with his players for the Miami Marlins. Yes. Uh, a lot is going on around the stadium too. He wants to potentially get rid of the home run statue, and oh. we wanted to talk about whether we felt like this was appropriate or not, whether we want to see it gone or we want to see it stay. Danny, you want to see it stay or you want to see it go? Lex, I want to see the Marlins statue stay. You can't take this iconic part of the stadium out of the field for superficial reasons. Part of baseball is entertainment, is family friendly space. And this is the definition of that. It's not an eyesore, it's an eye full. That's an antonym, by the way. So I believe that this thing should stay. It may be more seats could be put in, whatever the case may be. This is part of the park, and this is Miami. Miami is loud and fun and filled with culture, and I think that this adds to it. Anytime you have to put up a seizure warning before entering the ballpark, that means you're not going to have a good time. This thing is a complete eyesore, Danny, to steal your word. This thing is not a part of baseball at all. A part of baseball, uh, it's not an icon. It's not iconic. This thing's been up for like three or four years and needs to be torn down immediately. I'm telling you, if you want to start putting your own stamp on this organization, this has got to be the first thing to go. It has way too much going on. I don't even know if the people in Miami down there like it, but I know a lot of people that go to the ballpark put sunglasses on to avoid having to look at it and instead want to pay attention to what's going on in the field. Get rid of it. Come up with something better because this thing, it's just not doing it for me, man. It's called commitment. Commit to what you put in your park and be proud of it and deal with it. Okay. <laughs> That's all I got. All right. I like it. Uh, all right. So let's talk about what people would say if their team won the World Series. All right. Let's do it. Okay. Uh, Jeff. Jeff said, if the Astros repeat, which we have been hearing a lot about from players, from experts, from everyone in the business left to right, Jeff said it would be super califragilistic XB Aladokis. <laughs> Is that in the thesaurus? I don't think so. Can you spell that? Super. I can spell super. <laughs> S-U-P-E-R, and then after that, you don't want to hear me spell Good enough. That's yeah. good enough. Matthew said, when the Giants win again, when the Giants win again, which won't be this year, but uh -huh. soon, I will continue to feel gluttonous. Continue, yeah, because it'll be their fourth <laughs> ring in eight years. Exactly. Get out of here. Come on. Gluttonous is for sure the word, though, because <laughs> y'all are cleaning up over there in Bay Area. And then we have Sean, who said, if the Red Sox win, he said it'll be parade-bound, which... I'll take it, Sean. That's fine. I guess that's what you would be, and you can be that. Yeah, hey, good for him because a lot of people don't necessarily show up to the parades. I would go to the parade. Yeah, like Justin Verlander. <laughs> oh, good one. Yeah, skipping it for his wedding. Yes, and then Glenn. Glenn, my friend, again, I don't know which team you're talking about, so maybe, Alexa, you can help me out with this. Glenn said he would be euphoric and enraptured. These are great words, great use of the thesaurus. What team do you think he's talking about? Maybe the Indians because they haven't won in so long, so it could be one of those things where, you know, they got so close last year, right. and then seeing them do it would actually just be, the, you know, the cherry on top. Uh, maybe it's a team that hasn't won yet. 
Maybe it's a team that's never won yet. Yeah, there are seven teams in baseball that have never won, so maybe it's one of those teams. Like the Nationals. You're familiar with (laughs) Very familiar with one of those teams. Yeah, so uh, listen, if uh, Glenn's a Nationals fan, I feel your pain, buddy. Yeah, Glenn, let us know maybe by the end of the show. Uh, Gerald said when the Yankees win the World Series, the city will be lit. All right, Gerald, I'll give you that. I think it's a little too common right now, too popular, but we'll give you that word, I suppose. Yeah, I mean, he's right, though. The city is going to be bouncing off the walls because even though they have this power bat, right, in Giancarlo Stan that they signed this offseason, it's yes. still going to be incredible to see them all put it together and actually come out as World Series champions. There's a lot of great teams around the league, yeah. and uh, to fight through all of them in order to come out victorious would be pretty pretty lit. You know I agree. When, you know when a puzzle piece gets, like, a little wet or squishy and it doesn't mm-hmm. quite fit? Yeah. I, I want wonder if that could be the case for the Yankees. I hope it's not hmm. the case, but I wonder if if it may be like that. You think that it's just going to fit right in and maybe there might be a little less squishing going around I'm trying I'm to t- figure that out. I'm telling you, they will fit 59. <laughs> if they have to jam 59 home runs into that lineup, they will find any way to get that puzzle piece to fix. I have I have no doubt. Uh, and Glenn, Glenn said love the mystery. So Glenn's not going to tell us what team he's talking about, but that's all right, Glenn. You chose excellent words, so I appreciate your effort. A for right. effort. All right, Glenn, you got to give us a team, man. That's all part of it. But, uh, yeah, we appreciate the word. Our final story here, we're talking a little bit about the Yankees. Uh, we're going to talk about Aaron Judge because the Scranton-Wilkes-Barre Rail Riders have a game on May 26th, and uh, this just became a bucket list item for 2018. Oh, my gosh, look at this. Okay, I'm, <laughs> I've turned the corner, and I, uh, I'm against people ju- dressing up as judges going to the Bronx, but I'm totally for the bobblehead being dressed up. That's what bobbleheads exist for. Wait, you're against people dressing up like judges when they go to the game yeah. for the judges' chambers? Yeah, it's gotten a little extreme. Maybe this should have been our fair or foul topic. Are you kidding me? It's- that is why people go to the game to support their team and to be fans. That's what a fan is. I'm totally cool with it happening in 2017. If it shows up in 2018, we're going to have something to talk about because I'm telling you, you got to come up with something new. The thumbs down, it's over. The <laughs> judges' chambers, you can have the judges' chambers, but not everyone in the ballpark needs to ju- dress up as judges. What are you going to do for Giancarlo Stanton? You're going to wear one muscle. of those giant on, sculptures from the that, ballpark? Put on the muscle shirt. Like those fake muscle shirts are when people cook, they have the fake abs and the arms. That's what they should do for him. And maybe put like a um, like a Grecian like helmet on or something because he's a god. But long live the judge's chamber. This isn't the YMCA. Don't listen to Alexa. Don't listen. This isn't the YMCA. We are just adding characters <laughs> as we go along. This is a professional baseball organization, my man. Hey, you know what? We need to have more fun. Your boy, Bryce Harper, said make baseball fun again. And this is exactly what that does. Let the fans dress up. It should be Halloween every single day. and People should be dressing up like their favorite players and honoring them and supporting them. Because that's how they hit home runs and get to 70. I All want right? a picture of you in one of those judges' robes right next to the Marlins statue. And that will just complete this entire show. Don't You know what? Challenge accepted. Okay. okay? Let's make it happen. Challenge accepted in 2018. All right, thanks, Danny. Awesome show, and we'll see you tomorrow. See you. Thank you, everyone, for watching us here today on MLB.com. We are going to continue to discuss all the free agents uh, and where everyone will land via trade or potentially uh, signing via free agency. So we will discuss that all throughout the day today. Keep it locked right here on MLB.com for all the latest. And tomorrow on 1225 Live, same time, same place. We'll see you there, everyone. Take care.